All right, so we're gonna talk about another strategy that you can use to multiply decimals. We've talked about using arrays. We've talked about using equal groups models. We've talked about skip counting and using number lines. We've even talked about the standard algorithm. Well, now I'm gonna to talk to you about using partial products, which is just another tool in our tool belt that you can pull out if you need it. So um, to use this strategy, we're gonna think about it in terms of multiplying times whole numbers, but we're adding that decimal piece into it. So let's look at this first problem right here. Um, I have three and six tenths times two and four tenths. Now I have a partial prod or a area model written out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply these numbers. I have written them based on place value. So here is three for my three whole number up here and six tenths for my six tenths on that same number. Here I have two for my two whole units and my four tenths for my four tenths. And where those two numbers meet inside those boxes is where I'm gonna multiply these two numbers. So here, for example, three times two, I would get six, okay? Here I have six tenths times two. So that would be as if I took six tenths and multiplied it two times. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, there. Six and six. Okay, so if I were to add those together, I would have 12 tenths. Now I can't fit 12 tenths into that one spot, but I can regroup these and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of these tenths and basically weld them together and trade it out for a one whole. So 12 tenths is also equal to one and two tenths. So inside the little rectangle right here, I'm gonna write one and two tenths. Next, I have three times four tenths and the same thing applies. That would be like taking four tenths and multiplying it three times. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I have four plus four plus four, I have 12 tenths. So I can take that and regroup 10 of those into one whole and have one and two tenths. Okay, next I have six tenths times four tenths and six times four would be 24. But that would be hundreds. So if you think about how we did the standard algorithm, I did six tenths times four tenths. Six times four is 24. I'm gonna count my decimal places. One, two, one plus one is two. And I'm gonna move that decimal over one time, two times to get 24. Oops. Kind of, I could have picked a better place to write that, but we'll just leave it there. All right, so now I'm just going to add all of these totals up. Remembering I need to line up my decimal. So even though I don't have a decimal written for this one, I need to still remember that there is an imaginary decimal zero written behind that six. So six, I'm gonna go ahead and put that decimal zero there so I can help me remember to line up my decimals. I'm gonna use that next number, one and two tenths. This one, one and two tenths. And this one, 24 hundredths. Okay, but I have to do some things before I can actually add. I've lined up my decimals. Now I have to fill in any empty spots. And because I have hundreds on this bottom, I have to make sure each of these have hundreds. Then I need to drop my decimal down into my answer. And now I can just add as normal. Four plus zeros is four. Two plus two plus two is six. Six plus one plus one is so my answer to 33 and 6 tenths times 2 and 4 tenths is 8 and 64 hundredths. Now I could check that using my standard algorithm and line it up as if my decimal is not even there. And then add that decimal in at the end. Okay. 6 times 4 
is 24, carry my two. Four times three is 12, plus two, 13, 14. Okay, and I'm gonna write my zero. Can't forget it, don't forget your zero. I can X these out if I choose to so that I don't use them again. I'm going to multiply across. So 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay, so I'm done multiplying. I can now just add. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 1 plus 7 is 8. Okay, and now I can count up my decimal places from my factors up at the top. I have 1 on the top row. I have one decimal on the bottom row. One plus one is two, so I need to move my imaginary decimal down here over two different times. One, two, counting the spaces in between the numbers. Eight and 64 hundredths. That matched what I did on my partial products model. All right, let's do one more. So this next one I have five and three tenths times four and five tenths. So I've drawn my area model and I have my four and three tenths written on the top and my, or excuse me, five and three tenths written on the top, four and five tenths written down the side. So I'm gonna multiply those two numbers where the boxes, where the sides meet. I'm finding the area of this section right here. So five times four, I would get 20. 3 tenths times 4. If I had 3 tenths and I represented those 3 tenths 4 different times, I would have 12 tenths. Because I can't fit 12 tenths into that one place value, I need to regroup 10 of those to get one whole. So to get, I would get 1 and 2 tenths. Next, I have 5 tenths times 5. So that would be taking 5 of these little rods and counting it up five different times. If I did that, five times five would be 25. So if I have 25 tenths and I want to regroup that and like exchange 10 tenths for a whole, I would end up with two whole units and five tenths. Next, I have three tenths times five tenths. If I did three tenths times five tenths, I would end up with 15 hundredths. Now I can add them together. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up this time. So I have 15 hundredths plus 1 and 2 tenths plus 2 and 5 tenths plus 20. Now I've lined up my decimal places. I'm going to fill in any empty spots with my zero so that I have the same number of digits behind my decimal. And I'm going to drop my decimal into my answer place, answer choice, or answer spot. Now I can just add up my numbers. 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 2 plus 1 is 8. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus nothing is 2. So my answer is 20 and 85 hundredths. All right, so you have four more examples on here that you can do on your own, on your own piece of scratch paper. You're welcome to check your answer using the standard algorithm like we did with this one. That is up to you. But you need to be able to recognize and understand how to solve these using different methods. That may not be your preferred choice, but you still have to be able to have that in our tool belt and keep it in case we absolutely need it.